Welcome to Tinker Tailor Gamer Scribe. Uh, as you can see, I'm in a part of the workspace that I that hasn't gotten a whole lot of use. Um, that's because I didn't really have a whole lot of call for it before now. Um, this is my... how do I explain it? Um, it's my painting finishing station place. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it does a whole lot of things. Like, this is where I will be doing all of my, uh, like, hand painting um, and, uh, you know, light finish work, anything. <sighs> anything that this is where I keep the stuff to do it, I guess. Um, but Painting Finishing Station is probably what it will be called in if there, if I have an official fashion for naming things in the workspace. Um, so... Yeah, anyway, the reason why I'm here is because of this. This is one of the very first things I printed on the 3D printer while I was trying to get things figured out. And actually, this was my first real success. Um, it is obviously a bender head. Um, and one of my friends asked me if he could have it. And I said, yes, of course. Um, but then I asked him if he wouldn't mind having it painted. Uh, it's been forever since I've done any painting. Um, I used to paint miniatures. Um, I plan to again, but it's been a really long time, so I'm kind of out of practice. Um, and so I figured it'd give me an opportunity to get back into it and at least, you know, like get a brush in my hand again. Um, so this is, he agreed, and um, so now I'm going to go through the process of uh, prepping the bender head for painting, um, all 3D printed objects, um, and I'm not going to be able to show it to you really well, maybe I'll take a picture and add it in, um, have kind of a grain to them, you can, you can hear it when I rake my fingernail across it. I won't do that too much, I'm sorry. Um, but either way, so, in, and that's each layer as the, as the, as the 3D print is built, um, has its own like ring, like a tree kind of thing, except vertical and not from the middle out like a, an actual tree. But it works kind of the same way. So like they have a grain to them. You can see, you can see how the curvature in something um, affects each layer and things like that. And that's cool, but if I want to paint it, which I do, um, all kinds of, you know, the little anomalies and all of the, you know, like, like I said, the rings themselves um, need to be smoothed over so that I don't have to put, you know, 15 coats of paint on to make that not show up visibly um, when I paint. So, yeah, so that's basically what's going to happen for this first section is I'm going to use this. Um, it is a 100 and 150 grit foam block, so it's not super, super rough, but it should be plenty enough for me to take care of this um, at a speed that won't be too fast or slow for me to make sure that I'm not over or under doing it, uh, which is the important part. So, um, but yeah, so then, you know, I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of talking during this part because it's probably going to become a time lapse um, because it will be very repetitive and monotonous and take a long time. So, um, so yeah, you'll see the quick version of it, but I get to sit here and do all of this by hand. Um, and then when I'm done, there is some other prep that needs to be done before I actually start painting, and you'll see what that is when we actually get there. Um, yeah, and then we'll paint it, and we'll uh, put a protection coat on it, and uh, maybe I'll even get to see if he likes it. Um, it is somebody that's been on the channel before, Russell. Um, so, yeah, anyway, uh, let me get to this, and uh, I'll be back talky anyway, in just a bit. All right, so um, getting started, I just kind of take the bigger, simpler areas and give them a good once over. Um, you'll notice I'm typically working against the grain uh, because it, it, you know, I'm trying to smooth it down, so uh, moving against the grain as opposed to with it um, 
focuses on the peaks and doesn't mess so much with the valleys because you're trying to take the peaks down to meet the valleys a little bit better so you get a smoother product at the end. Um, so yeah, I mean, and you can, you can see, and you might want to pause this to see what I'm talking about specifically, but you can see where, um, as I'm sanding, there's places that you, there's some pretty obvious, uh, lighter colored rings in there. Um, and that's because as the thing printed, uh, you know, things get offset and, you know, cause the 3d printer is always jiggling a little bit when it's moving around. So, um, every layer doesn't stack up perfectly on top of the previous layer and so you get a little bit of get a little bit of wavering uh, as it builds up and then um, the fact that it was complicated by those rings are mostly where the the little visor port of bender's eyes sticks out um, and so the movement of the of the print head ad ad adjusting to the visor also kind of jilted that a little bit so um, there was quite, there was quite a bit I had to sand down there and, you know, I never did get it perfect, but, uh, but I did what I could. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, after I did that, I moved on to the front. Uh, most of this was pretty easy. Um, I didn't fuss too much with the, uh, with the lines in between the, the lit up parts of his mouth grill. And you can kind of see it on there again, if you pause to get a good frame, um, you can see that it's lighter on the at the top and then it's there's like a a pattern a thatchwork pattern of darker where i just didn't bother getting in with the sandpaper um and the main reason for that is is because that was going to stay black anyway so i didn't fuss with it too much um yeah no i mean it, it, pretty straightforward um so just so you know, it's not amateur hour. I understand that I don't have gloves on. I'm not wearing a face mask. Um, if I was using, um, like a power sander or something, uh, something with a motor that was going to blow things around, I might've been a little more concerned about it. But at the rate I was working and the fact that I was just using a foam block, um, I mean, you can, you can see that, you know, I've, I've hardly built up anything on the table. Um, and then I didn't want my hands covered because I needed to be able to feel how smooth it was before I moved on. <clears throat> um, so yeah, anyway, I chose not to wear the protection. And after 54 minutes, done sanding. So I did all the sanding I was going to do, but it was still really rough. So I figured I'd coat it in Mod Podge a couple of times and see whether or not that smoothed things out. Uh, I had no idea whether or not it was going to work. I just figured, yeah, what the heck, and just went to it. And uh, so you can see me here, I'm putting on the, on the first layer of it. And I was kind of generous with it. I... Uh, you know, since I was using it to smooth it out and I know that it would, you know, kind of become a nice consistent coat after, um, I was on pretty generous. So what I'm doing there with the tweezers and the toothpicks is I was using a brand new brush to brush on the Mod Podge. And so all the little, some of the little hairs from the, the brush head were sticking to the vendor. So that's why I was doing that. Um, so I let it dry. Now I'm applying the second coat. Um, basically the same as the first coat. You can see how uh, after the first coat dried, he kind of turned back into his natural, the natural color of the plastic, that nice black. Um, because a, kind of an added benefit of the Mod Podge was um, all of that dust became part of the combo again so it didn't have that foggy look not that it would have mattered because it's getting painted over anyway but uh, but it was kind of a cool secondary effect that i wasn't expecting um, so you can tell here i'm since i'm putting on a second coat that the first coat was uh it was kind of giving me a result i was looking for in terms of smoothing over some of the areas that just didn't want to sand down smoothly like i had mentioned earlier with the uh that banding around where the visor was that kind of got 
it was not sanding well. So uh, for this portion here, um, I just kind of did a, a, an open time lapse so you could kind of see how the um, the Mod Podge is drying on him, and you can see where I was putting it in thicker and where I wasn't. So you can see like in the bridge between the eyes where uh, I put it on really, really thick because I couldn't really get the the foam block in there very well to sand, and it's a pretty highly visible area. Even though it's going to be black, I wanted to make sure that it was still smooth as possible so that, you know, I don't know, I'm trying to make it as good as I could, so that's what I was working with. Um, so, yeah, I think I think that this whole section here where the, with the Mod Podge drying was about 20 minutes or so, give or take. Um, maybe a little bit longer than that. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I cut it off after it was dry. I was away a little bit longer than that. But, uh, but no, it's kind of cool just getting to see it, you know, go from the white and as the Mod Podge slowly, slowly dry as it turns back into, you know, invisible. I mean, but, you know, so, but you can see right here that you know his forehead kind of has a shine to it um that's the that is totally the mod podge on top of it so the uh um so yeah i was using the antenna to hold on to it while i was painting so now i'm doing the antenna and then i'm re-hitting places that i wanted to make extra sure were as smooth as i could get them for painting so um, yeah, tops and bottoms of the visor, inside and outside of the visor. Um, and then everything gets two coats, so I'm putting that second coat on the antenna right now. And uh, yeah, as soon as that dries, it's ready to paint. <laughs> 